this wants to know about mechanics, basically. What is LDN? How does it work? Um, why does it work? What does it do? It seems to be prescribed for many, um, many different problems. Does it work the same for all of them? Any warnings or side effects uh, for one or all illness? Um, we could probably each talk on this for a long time, but <laughs> LTN, um, just a couple of basics of the mechanism of action. And so it is an opioid receptor antagonist, meaning it's going to block um, the opioid receptor. And in turn, that's where it regulates your endorphins. Um, also, the other mechan mechanism of action would be um, it's an antagonist at the toll-like receptor. And so it's going to block those excitatory cytokines. And so you'll see kind of two thoughts there. Endorphins kind of regulate the immune system. Toll-like receptors regulate all of that inflammation pathway. So we're going to regulate the immune system, and then we can stop a lot of that inflammation. So that's a very quick um, how does it work? Um, so that's where you see all the different, what's it's being used for. So any type of autoimmune disease, um, if it helps regulate inflammation, then it's going to help with pain. It's going to help with um, all sorts of different things. So that's why you see all these different indications. Um, it's constantly changing and people are trying it for more and more things. Um, so definitely check in LDN Research Trust. I think they have a full page on every single indication that it's ever been tried in. Um, so definitely go there. And then um, does it work for the same for all of them? Kind of, yeah. I mean, both of those things, obviously it's two different pathways, but it's hitting both of those. Um, like we said, you might be doing it twice a day if you're working for anxiety and depression. Autoimmune, you're probably taking it more once a day. Um, warnings or side effects. Um, I would say, obviously, you don't want your patient to be taking chronic opioids because that's not going to work, right? Because it's hitting the same receptor. I would say that's the main contraindication that we could probably all agree on. And side effects. Um, Normally that's why we're doing a titration up is to avoid any type of side effects because really these patients might have sleep disturbance if you dose too high, maybe headache, um, some patients report anxiety, GI issues. So I hope that kind of answered all those questions. There was a lot in there, but that could take an hour to go through. Um, Michelle or Steven, is there anything I kind of missed? I'm going to let Stephen take over. You wrote the chapter at the beginning. Yeah, Stephen did uh, write the chapter it. in the book, so that he was, should have answered that question. I was just thinking that's a fabulous summary. I, I probably don't need to do my talk anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a, we've got it down pat because we know it so well. Um, it's funny how after it's been a few years now, and since we sort of really came to the conclusions, and all, I mean, I remember a time when we really didn't know how LDN worked, and we now have all these papers and all the evidence of. So, how it actually goes, it's quite a different place to be now. Talking about that, the next question is, um, I'm a very new user, and I'm taking it for chronic fatigue syndrome and for pain from vertebral compression fractures. Can you please address how a person finds their sweet spot? Now, I, I think you actually might be one of our patients. Um, so I'm not sure if uh, we had this conversation earlier and we're just checking with somebody else, um, how, <laughs> but I'm gonna answer it tonight. Yeah, I'm gonna answer it anyway. Um, so, Chronic fatigue syndrome I mean, and ME and fibro are all very much um, in the spot of autoimmune disease, where we know that there is this group of symptoms where you can get improvement with LDN, and in fact, most of the time you do. Um, so taking that one first, um, the sweet spot for chronic fatigue is much harder to find than it is for many of the other conditions. Um, so we describe it quite often as climbing a mountain and falling off into a lovely ocean of glorious happiness at the other side. Sometimes to get to the point where you are doing much better with chronic fatigue, you do have to start slow, as we've talked about, start low, you can go very slowly, and you may go through a hump in the middle, round about sort of after two, two and a half milligrams, where you start to feel absolutely dreadful. Um, because, and you start feeling maybe you have flu symptoms or you start feeling very tired again. And you know, this used to happen a lot with MS patients when they started on the higher dose and didn't titrate. But we know for chronic fatigue patients, if you drop your dose by half and then start back up again and push through that barrier, you tend to then be able to find a sweet spot somewhere between three and 4.5 milligrams. 
where most of your symptoms are controlled. And again, if you're taking it for, um, well, that's going to be sort of nerve pain as well, but by the, by the time of the, the fractures, when you get to the point of getting over the hump, if you have one, and getting to, to the point where your, your CFS symptoms are improved, you're in the right spot where the pain control should start to ease off. You, know, you start to ease off um, over the next week or two after you get there.